Hi, my name is Tony Lecca. I'm one of the co-owners of T&J Rescue Enterprises. Uh, I have over 25 years fire department experience with 21 spent on a heavy rescue company in Waterbury, Connecticut, where I was a lieutenant and eventually retired as a captain. My partner in this venture, John Winterberger, has 30 years of fabrication and welding experience uh, with the city he's employed with now and also in his own endeavors. So between the two of us, we've got a fair amount of knowledge in our particular fields. Several years ago, we started noticing a problem with lifting vehicles off trap victims. Uh, the problem being it was very difficult to do it in a timely, safe, and effective manner. With that in mind, we went ahead and developed the TL9 stabilizer, which is safe, effective, and very, very efficient. The purpose of the TL9 stabilizer is to go ahead and be used in conjunction with the spreaders to achieve a safe, efficient, and horizontally stable lift. Let's talk about some construction features for the TL9 stabilizer. The base plate, which is six inch by six inch, half inch plate steel, is compression tested to 60 ton. The towers, which you see here, are half inch plate steel, four inches tall, held in place chamfer welded to the base plate by half inch gussets on either side. The towers have been horizontally tested by taking wedge and pressing it in to 15 ton with 1 8 inch of deviation in the towers. So as you can see here, the towers are slotted. The towers are slotted one and a half inches and they have a 5 8 inch roll pin that runs between them. All right, the pin is designed to travel, as you can see here. All right, now you're asking yourself, why do I want the pin to travel? I want the pin to travel for one specific reason. The bottom jaw, when it makes contact with this pin, will push the pin upward. When the pin reaches the top of the towers, you will stop your lift. At that point, you will have your spreaders approximately 70% open. Okay, what I have in my hand here is the TL9 stabilizer that was specifically constructed for use with combination tools. The only difference between the two is that the opening between the towers on the TL9 stabilizer that you see here is two and a quarter inches. The stabilizer that I have in my hand is one and five eighths inches. So this covers the difference in the tips between a regular spreader and a combination spreader. Also, as with the same on this TL9 stabilizer here, we have a slot cut right behind the, the 5 8 inch stop pin. What happens here is, as the jaws tip up, they ride into the slot and they're locked in place. Also, on this unit, which will be available on this as well, is we have anti-skid measures in place. The base plate will be stamped by the manufacturer on both units so that you have anti-skid in place. Okay, we're going to talk about some safety stuff that goes along with the TL9 stabilizer. As with any lifting operation that we go ahead and do, we're going to have to lift an inch, crib an inch. We always want to keep that load under control. So if for some reason the load travels, it doesn't have far to go. Standard industry is lift an inch, crib an inch. Okay, protective clothing, that's by your department SOP. We advise minimum helmet, gloves, safety shoes, safety glasses as a minimum. Your department may require full protective clothing in the form of bunker pants and a coat as well. That's entirely up to you. As far as the unit itself, we really only have one moving piece. Our suggestion is very simply, don't put your hands under the jaws, over the jaws, or between the jaws and the moving pin. That is where you can have a pinch hazard and obviously you could cause damage to your fingers. The unit is designed with a 5 8 inch piece of stock at the front that when the bottom tip contacts it, you can move the plate as necessary without having your hands in the tool, around the tool, or under the vehicle. Okay, now we're gonna talk about some crib stuff. Real basic housekeeping. This unit is designed so that we can lift from the long axis of the car. 
All right, what do I mean by the long axis? The longer side of the vehicle is the side we want to lift from. Why? The two tires, if I lift from this side, two tires on the opposite side remain in contact with the ground. That is friction. That keeps the vehicle inherently stable to begin with. What we will also do is we will, on the other side, place two step chocks loosely under the frame. When we begin to lift from this side, the vehicle will dip, make contact with those step chocks, and lock in place, effectively turning this into a lever. As we lift, we get direct lift. We come in with our crib stack, however you choose to do it. As the vehicle rises, you go ahead and move in an inch at a time. Lift an inch, crib an inch. We always, always support the load when we're lifting. We never lift unsupported or unchased by a crib stack. First off, I'd like to take this time to thank everybody for taking a little bit of time out of your busy schedule to go ahead and check out the TL9 Stabilizer. Um, you can obviously contact us at our Facebook page, TNJ Rescue Enterprises. Uh, email is there. My phone number is there. We're available for questions. Uh, the product is not on sale as of this moment, but uh, we are in the works for getting production uh, squared up. Lots and lots of interest. We have uh, another tool in the pipeline that will be coming down the road soon. And uh, look forward to talking to you guys. Thank you.